Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new upcoming x86 single board computer known as the Hackboard. Now this video is going to be a little odd because the unit that I have in my possession is known as the Hackboard 1, which won't even see the light of day. Instead, they're going to be releasing the Hackboard 2, which has a higher end CPU, better Wi-Fi, better RAM, and two M.2 slots instead of a single one on this Hackboard 1 that I have here. But unfortunately, there's no Hackboard 2 units out in the wild yet for review, so they sent over the Hackboard 1, and this is what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Now the version 1 that we're going to be taking a look at in this video has the same form factor as the version 2, but there will be a few key differences. But since I couldn't get my hands on the Hackboard 2, we're taking a look at the version 1 here. So overall, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a single board computer, three USB 3.0 ports. We can see that exposed CPU. It does come with a heat sink that we can throw on top of this thing. We'll do a comparison of the specs in just a little bit, but first up, let's go ahead and get everything out of the box. So along with the hackboard itself, you'll receive some stickers and a user manual. We also have our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas, plus our power supply. I believe it's 12 volts at 3 amps, and it does come with a ton of adapters, so no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to plug this into the wall. Yeah, it's 12 volts, 3 amps, and here's the outlet adapters. And finally, inside of the box, we get our heat sink. Now this just uses double-sided sticky tape. This is the heat sink that comes with the board itself, but they do offer a full aluminum heat sink case with a fan built in for $9 on their website. So real quick, I just wanted to give you a size comparison between the Hackboard and the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see, the Hackboard is coming in a bit larger, but if we do have better performance out of this Intel CPU, that's not going to matter to me in the end. It's still a very small single board computer. And with this x86 CPU, there's a ton of different operating systems that we can install, from Linux, Android x86, and even Windows 10. So as you can see up front here, we have three USB 3.0 ports. If we move around back, we have full-size HDMI 2.0, gigabit Ethernet, and power in. And most notable, over here on this side, we have 40 GPIO pins, and this does support the Python IDE. Soldered on Intel AC Wi-Fi chip with Bluetooth 4.2. And we also have this LCD display connector over here, and a micro USB card reader. Now, on the Hackboard 2, they've actually removed the micro SD card reader and added another M.2 slot. But on the Hackboard 1, we have a single M.2 slot, which is good for up to a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. Now, as specs go for the Hackboard 1, for the CPU, we have an Intel N3350. This is a dual-core CPU, base clock of 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.4. Built-in Intel HD 500 graphics, 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, a soldered down 64 GB eMMC module, plus that M.2 slot, which is good up to a 2 TB SSD, and it also has onboard 802.11 AC Wi Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. So the Hackboard 1 is definitely rocking an older Intel CPU, but when it comes to the Hackboard 2 specs, that CPU has been upgraded to the Intel N4020. It's still a dual core CPU base clock of 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.8. Built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics. We still get 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and that 64 GB eMMC storage module, but it comes with two M.2 slots. So the Hackboard 2 can support up to 4 terabytes of storage. Two 2 terabyte M.2s will fit in that unit. And it also has an upgraded Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. It'll do over a gig and a half and it comes with Bluetooth 5.1 instead of 4.2 like the Hackboard 1. Now, as for pricing on the Hackboard, we're talking about the Hackboard 2 here. With Linux, it's $99. With Windows 10 Pro pre-installed and activated, it's $139. This is available right now for pre-order up on Crowd Supply. I'll leave a link for that and their main website in the description in case you're interested in learning more. Now it's time to move over to some testing. Now remember, we're on the Hackboard 1 here. I don't have a Hackboard 2 to test, so we're on that older Apollo Lake Celeron N3350. 1.1 GHz, dual core, with a burst up to 2.4. 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2133. And the built-in Intel HD 500 graphics. It's not UHD here. But I still want to see what this thing can do. Now, as for 4K video playback on this chip here, I know it's kind of hard pressed to do it. So what we're going to be doing is tackling some 1080p video. We're also going to test some web browsing and some lower end games. So first thing we're going to do here is test out a little bit of web browsing. I'll go ahead and launch Microsoft Edge. 
does take a little longer to load than I'm used to on more higher end CPUs, given that this is an older dual core Apollo Lake. But uh, as soon as everything's loaded up, it's actually pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and just head over to the Hackboard website. And there we are. So yeah, that did take a few seconds to get into there. Uh, we'll go ahead and learn more. But like I said, once everything's loaded up, I mean, it's a pretty smooth experience here. Next thing I want to do is test some 1080p video playback. Remember, this only has the Intel HD 500 GPU, so I'm not even going to stress this older CPU out with 4K. But as soon as I get my hands on the Hackboard 2, we will be doing some 4K video playback. Okay, so here we are, 1080p, 60 FPS. I've reset my frame counter up here. We did get a few drop frames loading in, but not bad at all at 1080p 60. So 720, 1080 is gonna be perfectly fine on a chip like this, and we'll have to wait for that hackboard too to really test out 4K, because when I went over to 4K, we were dropping a ton of frames here. This setup is just not made for 4K video playback. Next up, I want to test Plex, and unfortunately, most of the stuff that I have here is 4K. I do have one 1080p 60 video. 1080p 60, 4.5 megabits per second. I think we're going to be able to handle this. and that loaded up way quicker than I thought it would. But then again, we are at 1080p with a lower bitrate video, but I mean, 1080p is playing great like you see here. Here's Minecraft, this is the Windows Store version. I do have fancy graphics on, but I've set the chunks down to 10, and it is a bit laggy. I mean, we're probably getting an average of around 32. I do see it jump up to around 55 to 60 every once in a while. But as soon as you get going, it will drop down, and I have seen it go as low as 22, and this really comes down to that older Intel GPU. I also wanted to go through and test a little bit of light emulation. Here we have N64, I'm using RetroArch with the Moopin 64 Plus Next Core. Diddy Kong Racing is running amazingly, and I figured it would here. I mean, it really doesn't take that much from an Intel CPU to run this N64 emulator. And finally, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. At the stock resolution with no upscale, it actually works pretty decently. Now this is an easier one to run, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Every once in a while I do see it dip down to around 57, but for the most part it is playable on this unit. So I'm going to take it up a notch to a harder to run game. And that's going to be Crazy Taxi 2. Basically, we have the same thing here. Performance is great at the native resolution of the Dreamcast, but if you try to upscale any, it will fall on its face. But I'd say a lot of these Dreamcast games using the ReDream emulator will be playable on this Celeron chip. So I'm going to go ahead and say it, I'm so glad that they're not going to be using this CPU that we saw running in this video in the Hackboard 2. Releasing something with that N3350 in 2020 would have been a big bummer, but that N4000 or the N4020 is something that I'm really looking forward to. I'm actually a big fan of the N4000, and it's actually a decent performer, so I can't wait to get my hands on that. I mean, everything that we saw tested in this video on the Hackboard 1 is going to work so much better on the Hackboard 2, and it's just a matter of time before I get my hands on one, but like I mentioned at the beginning, the only one that they could send over right now was the one that's not going to see the light of day, and I'm kind of glad that it's not going to see the light of day because the CPU in the Hackboard 1 is just way too underpowered. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, the Hackboard 2 is going for $99 with Linux and $139 with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed and activated. 
And I personally do think it's worth a hundred bucks with Linux and that upgraded N4020 CPU. So if you're interested in learning more or even putting in a pre-order, I will leave links to their website in the description. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I'm trying to get my hands on one as soon as possible for some more testing. But like always, thanks for watching.